Welcome back to Slough News 22. Well, we've had a string of nice days here. Yes, it's been really nice, but we are in St. Louis, and we know in St. Louis that the weather here does not last too long if it's good. That's true, and so is it going to last? Well, lead forecaster Ashley Colgen joining us. What do you think? You know, Sri is right. In spring, the nice weather, it doesn't last long. There's always a storm to follow it, and that's what we're looking at today. We have been setting up some severe thunderstorms all day today out in Texas through Oklahoma, up through Kansas, and it has been a wet one out there for them with some really strong thunderstorms that will be moving into our area. But today, could you complain? It was beautiful. We were at a high of 81 and a low of 54, which that 81 is actually 10 degrees higher than our normals. Who can complain? Currently at Lambert, we're at 77 degrees, light rain, our humidity is at 64%, and our wind is out of the south. Let's take a look at our satellite, and this is a huge system. It extends all the way from Texas up to the Great Lakes, all the way down through Colorado. You can see the cold front associated with it and a dry line in the um, cloud field. And this is our rain, and it extends all the way from Nebraska to Texas, and it's moving our way. And as we zoom into the St. Louis area, we can start to see some pop-up showers associated with this, and that's why we're seeing some light rain right now. But our major concern is out here in Kansas, and that will be moving our way, and that will be our cause for our severe thunderstorm possibility for this evening into tonight. Now, in Oklahoma and Texas, they do have tornado warnings, and that's what we're worried about. They're already seeing them, and they're just tracking their way into the St. Louis area. Now, this is our possibility of our greatest thunderstorms, and it stretches all the way from Kansas to Texas. Texas has the greatest possibility right now that's going to change overnight. And we can also see that there's snow associated with it in Colorado, flooding, and um, more severe weather throughout the um, Midwest. So keep an eye out on this because we will see the possibility of large hail, strong winds, and the possibility of strong lightning. So keep your eye on the sky. This is meteorologist Ashley Colgen. I had a look at current weather. Now Kelly Haber will have a look at the forecast. Thanks, Ashley. Now, this low right here over western Kansas is going to move its way over to the St. Louis area. And as it makes its, as it makes its way towards St. Louis, it's going to be pulling all this moisture out of the Gulf, which will be putting us at a risk for not only showers, but some severe weather over the next couple days. Let's look at our precipitation forecast. So as you can see down in Texas and Louisiana border, we got a bullseye at about three inches of precipitation they're expecting down there, which could be a problem with a lot of those low-lying areas in the south. And there are, I know there are a lot of flood watches and warnings going out with these areas. So we make our way up towards St. Louis, which is where we're at right now. You can see about one inch, one to two inches of precip in our area. So looking to tomorrow, we'll have maybe another inch or so of precip as a precipitation on Thursday with that precipitation up in Michigan and Wisconsin also. Looking at the temperatures across the area, 74 in St. Louis for tomorrow's high, 70s across most of St. Louis, Illinois area. And as you can, you can see, this cold front actually is this temperature gradient, 59 degrees over in Kansas, but we got the 70s over in St. Louis, and that'll be bringing our temperatures down for the next few days. Looking at tonight's, looking at tonight's forecast, 58 degrees with rain as those thunderstorms move into the area with a south wind at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Looking at the rest of the week, Wednesday, we'll have 74 degrees, with a high of 74 degrees, of course, those heavy precipitation chances and a low of 55 degrees on Wednesday night. Thursday, 67 degrees as that cold front passes through, lowering our temperatures and bringing us down to 47 on Thursday night. Friday, with that clearing after the cold front, we should have some clear, sunny, sunny skies, 67 degrees for our high on Friday, with a low of 50 on Friday night. Saturday, back up into the 70s, 75 on Saturday, beautiful sunny skies, and 55 on Saturday night, and then 80 degrees on Sunday, another warm and sunny day, much like we were seeing last week. All right, well, thanks a lot, Kelly, and also, of course, Ashley. Looks like we've got some rain, yes. but it is April. There is some sun at the end of the week, so we can look forward to that. Yeah, yeah I can't exactly. wait till the weekend. For those of you looking for a summer job, there is new opening on campus, men's basketball coach. You might not be qualified, but sports director Clayton Buria will be here after the break to tell us who is and who SLU has their eye on. 
Welcome back, SLU. Sports Director Clayton Bury is here. And uh, Clayton, I guess you didn't think last week that you'd be here this week talking about college basketball. No, I did. the weather's been so nice recently. It's baseball season. Yeah, but, it, uh, it should be. It should be, but you know what? I've got some news for you. And SLU has some news for everybody. Last Tuesday, St. Louis University Athletic Department fired head coach of the men's basketball team, Brad Soderberg, after five seasons and an 80-74 and 74 record as the Billikens coach. Soderberg, who led the Bills to its first 21 season last year since the 97-98 season, is replaced by interim head coach Angus Thorpe during the transition of finding a new coach. So this begs the question, why? Why did SLU fire Soderberg after his best season as head basketball coach? And in an attempt to answer that question, St. Louis University issued this statement. An extensive review of the state of the men's basketball program has been ongoing since the end of the 2006-2007 season. The review has included a detailed analysis of the just concluded season, the team's failure to make a postseason tournament in recent years, and the future of the men's basketball program as the team prepares to move into a new on-campus arena for the 2008-2009 season. It was determined that a coaching change is necessary if the university is to achieve its goal of cons consistently having one of the na nation's top basketball programs. All right, so that's good. It sounds like they want to win there. But as we go further into the statement, it reads, because the success of the new Chaffetz Arena is largely contingent on the success of the men's basketball team, it is imperative that the team be led by a coach who we believe can es establish a program that consistently vies for conference championships and engages in postseason play. So it certainly seems like the arena, not the players, not the individuals on the team, is the number one priority of the school. The school said it still is $7.5 million short of its fundraising goal so could this firing and hiring of a new coach be a stunt by St. Louis to get possible boosters excited for the new coach? Well, no one will know because St. Louis Athletic Department declined to further comment, but certainly the timing of this issue is quite suspicious being that it is in the middle of recruitment. As far as possible head coaches to replace Brad Soderberg go, the Billikens have been reported to talk to former University of Utah coach and current ESPN analyst Rick Majerus. Now, he has a history of winning basketball games. He took Utah to 10 NCAA tournaments in 14 years, including four Sweet 16 appearances, two Elite Eights, and the National Championship game in 98. He's certainly the front runner, front runner for this position, but should he decline the job offer, another current ESPN analyst in Fran Fraschilla is among prospects for the job. Fraschilla has 23 years of coaching experience in college basketball, posting career winning records at Manhattan, St. John's, and the University of New Mexico. Now, St. Louis is scheduled to hear from Majerus and whether or not he wants to come to SLU on Wednesday. In a look at other sports on campus, the Billikens baseball team has just completed a three-game trip to Fordham, where they took two of three on the road. That improves their conference record to 6-8, and eight, where they sit tied for seventh in the conference behind leaders Charlotte, Richmond, and Xavier. The girls' softball team also went on the road last week and where they split a two-game series at Charlotte. The girls seem to have fared a little bit better in their conference, where they sit in fourth place with a record of 7-6. and six. Massachusetts, however, seems to be running away with the conference with an undefeated record of 12-0. and zero. Now, both teams still have at least 10 games remaining on their schedules before the conference tournament, so hopefully they can pick up some momentum and go into the tournaments fired up. That would be great. We'd love yeah, to see them there, obviously. Yeah. Always uh, great to have you in studio, and great to see our Billikens doing well. Well, when we come back, we're going to have uh, some entertainment for you, so you want to stick around. Mm -hmm. 